Uh, hi, my name is Arnold. I'm with the Mobile Robotics Lab at uh, McGill University. I did this work when I was at Ocean Networks Canada uh, on a visit this past summer uh, with my colleagues at the University of Victoria. Uh, the video you see here is a time lapse of a seven hour long deep sea substrate survey. Uh, maps of substrate types like the kinds that you can see here are really useful for building models of deep sea environments. Uh, so they're of interest to researchers, including biologists and geologists. Uh, but state-of-the-art tools can't really capture enough detail to build good maps for this task. Uh, so in this work, we developed a pipeline which can build this kind of map from the archive of ROV videos that Ocean Networks Canada has. Uh, here are some examples from the video I just showed you which illustrate the constraints with which uh, helped us choose our algorithm. Uh, right off the bat, you can see some obvious challenges. Uh, in deep sea videos, lighting, perspective, and contrast can really vary, uh, and that can cause some problems. Another, maybe more subtle constraint is that almost every frame contains multiple relevant substrate types. Uh, so for that reason, we chose to model the mixture of substrate types visible in every frame rather than assigning a single label. Uh, finally, uh, building uh, manual labeling for this kind of data set requires some pretty specific expertise. And so for, for that reason, we developed an unsupervised algorithm. Uh, we were motivated to build this pipeline for application to a particular area. Uh, that's the Endeavor field, which is marked in the gold box in the top map. Uh, Endeavor is about 300 kilometers west of British Columbia, and it's about 2.5 kilometers deep. It's a volcanic hydrothermal vent complex and has been studied for 40 years for its geology and ecosystems. But these kinds of maps don't really exist there, so this was kind of important work for some of the researchers at Ocean Networks Canada. Uh, on the right, you see two of the classification schemes we came up with for imagery from the area. Uh, these were developed with help from a geologist who's an expert in the region. From top to bottom, you can see the categories sedimented, interrupted lava flow, pillow lava, cliff, other rock, turbid water, and no substrate. Uh, here's an overview of our pipeline. This is kind of the main contribution of our work. I can't give you all the details here. You'll have to come see my poster. Uh, but I'll just give you the three major steps for now. Uh, the first one is to choose a set of sample images. Uh, our video contains almost 60% of images that contain no substrate whatsoever, so we use a trained classifier to discard those frames. Uh, we also remove frames from oversampled regions in the survey using the position system on the ROV in this step. Second step is to build a bag of words for each frame, uh, and we use the texture-based feature rather than a key point based one for that, as we found it to be more performant. Uh, the final step is to train a visual topic model, which I'll explain a little bit more about in a second, uh, to classify the kinds of uh, substrate that we see in these images. The visual topic model represents substrate types as probability distributions over the features. Uh, we call those distributions topics. The model assumes that each image has a distribution over the topics, and it also assumes that each feature was generated by sampling first the image topic distribution and then the corresponding topic feature distribution. Uh, so when we use the model, given the features, we estimate the image topic and topic feature distributions. Uh, we can do that without using any labeled training, and uh, it gives us a mixture of the substrate types in the image topic distributions when we've finished. Uh, here are some results from that visual survey I showed at the beginning. Uh, each row in the right figure here shows the top examples for the topic paired with each of the categories on the left. Uh, you can see that they're showing kind of the same substrate types. You know, the first row is showing sediment, second one is showing interrupted lava flow, although that's a little bit less obvious, uh, etc. Uh, when we considered the full mixtures, our results showed that the topics were strongly correlated with the true categories, but in order to show you the full details of that analysis, you'll have to come see me at the poster. Uh, these top images illustrate why we need mixtures for this task also. Uh, even though an image may be a good example of a, uh, of a type, that type may not be the most dominant in the image. So for instance, if you look at the third row, the pillow lava, uh, you'll see that most of those would have been classified as sediment uh, if you just used a single label. So that illustrates why this is such an important uh, technique. Uh, so I hope you'll just uh, take away three points from this talk if you take away anything. Uh, first of all, our project was to build a pipeline to learn substrate types from ROV video. Uh, that will work even under so optimal photographic conditions. Uh, second of all, we achieved this by using a topic model. Uh, and using a topic model, we can estimate the mixture of substrate types rather than a single label, and we don't need any training data. Uh, and finally, I hope you'll 
uh, agree with me that substrate mapping is useful across fields in ocean science and it's challenging from a computer vision perspective. So I've had to gloss over a lot of details and there are a lot of interesting things and I have more to say about this. Uh, so if you have any questions or comments, please come see me at poster 1D7.